Hi everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to show you my method for painting weathered stone. Here are the paints that I'll be using, and to demonstrate this technique I'll be using the pillars from Mass of Darkness and the statues from the ruins of Osgiliath. For this technique you'll need a decent stippling brush. I'm going to be using this brush which is called a number 6 scrumbler brush by Artists Loft. I've already primed all the figures in grey, but the statues have a two-tone prime of black from underneath and grey from above. So as you can see, I'm taking the paint straight from the pot and wiping most of it off, but not as much as you would for a dry brush. Just enough so that when you tap the tip of the brush on something, it's leaving small dots. I'm starting with the brightest colour first, which is the Althuan grey, and I'm just going to gently tap the tip of the brush on the pillar, leaving small dots all over the entire surface. The goal is to get a uniform coverage of the dots all over the pillar, but don't smother it. You want a nice mottled effect like you see here. Once you're done, your pillar should look something like this. I'm moving on to the next shade of grey, and I'm not cleaning my brush. You don't want to get your bristles wet or your paint will smear. I'm just dipping it into the Celestial Grey and repeating the same process. This looks like it takes a bit of time, but you don't have to clean your brush or thin your paints, so it really isn't that bad. Now with each successive colour of grey, I'm using fewer and fewer dabs of paint. I always want to have a small amount of the previous paint showing through. So here's how the pillar looks after the second layer of grey. I'm going to put on two more layers, the next of which is going to be a one-to-one -one mix of Celestra grey and Mechanica standard grey. I had to wash the bristles of my mixing brush, so I'm using the end of my handle to avoid getting any extra water into the paint. This is the third layer of grey, so I'm not using a lot of it, just adding random splashes of it around the pillar. This is the pillar after the third layer. For the fourth and final layer, I'm using pure Mechanica Standard Grey. This color will also have the least amount of coverage on the pillar. It's just going to add some more variation of tone. Next, I'm creating a mix of half water and half null oil. I'm doing this so that I don't overpower the grey tones with the wash. I'm first putting this wash into the areas with a lot of detail, and then I'm going to coat the entire pillar with a thin layer. This is going to make all the cracks in the pillar stand out, as well as more smoothly blending together all the various grey tones. Once that's done and the wash is completely dried, I'm switching to Longbeard Grey for a dry brush. I'm only using this on the detailed areas at the top and bottom of the pillar, and to highlight the edges of the cracks. After you're happy with the dry brushing, the pillar is done, except for sealing it with varnish, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Now I'm going to fast forward through the first painting stages on the statues, because they're exactly the same as a pillar. I will, however, show you what the statue looks like at the end of each stage. Here it is after applying the Althuan Grey. This is the statue after the Celestra Grey. Here I'm applying the one-to-one -one mix of Celestra and Mechanica Standard Grey. And this is the statue after applying pure Mechanica Standard Grey. Next I'm applying the same half and half mix of water and null oil. Now the statue is a bit different in that it has a lot more detail involved, but initially the main goal is still the same, just cover the entire statue with a thin layer of the null oil. Now because the null oil is thinned out, I'm going to go back and pick out select areas that I want to darken further to bring out the detail. I'm going to further darken all the cracks along the pillar, and I'm going to trace along any of the recesses of the statue that aren't pronounced enough to really stand out. Once that's done, I'm going to dry brush the statue much like the pillar using the Longbeard Grey. I'm going to brush very lightly and carefully so that I don't create any harsh contrasts with my paint. 
There's a lot of edges on these statues, so I'm focusing the paint there, as well as the top of the head and the arms. Once the dry brushing is done, I'm going to add two finishing touches to the statue. The first is to use some Athonian camo shade to create the look of algae growing on the statue. It's also going to add a tint of color that'll make this more interesting to look at. I'm adding this to places where I think water might pool after a rain and would allow algae to grow. So all around the base, the small ledges, as well as the folded arms and the beard. I'm also starting about a third of the way up the robes of the statue, and I'm adding three layers of the camo shade. Each one will be a bit smaller than the last, and closer to the bottom. This is a fairly subtle shift in the color, so it might be getting washed out on your screen from the bright lights I'm using. But you'll be able to see it quite clearly if you do this yourself. Once the camo shade is dried, it's time to spray the statues and pillars with varnish. If you want a polished stone look, you could go with a satin or a gloss varnish. If you want them to look more weather-worn or like sedimentary rock, you should use a matte varnish. I'll be spraying my pillars with a satin varnish and the statues with a matte varnish. The pillars are going to be handled a lot by players and the satin varnish is more durable. The second final touch for the statues is a bit of mossy growth. For this, I'm using a very finely ground up flock and some PVA glue. I always mix the glue with a bit of water to make it easier to spread, and I'm just going to dabble this in random places around the base of the statue. After that I'll just throw on some flock and tap off all the excess and let it dry. And here's the final product. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I hope you found this video useful, and if you'd like to see more, please hit like and subscribe. I'd like to say a special thank you to all my patrons for supporting this channel, and as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching.